Hello everybody and welcome back to MTD CNC's live shows. Now we are going live in, shall we say, about 20 minutes on this stand for a proper tour of the Heimberg stand. But first of all, we're going to introduce a few characters because I am not happy for starters, Geo. I'm not happy. Because I set a precedent of a time of 33 seconds and they've only gone and beaten it. It's been beaten, hasn't it? And I can see behind us that um, they're, 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 they're challenging um, everyone to beat the time. And the time that's been um, set at the minute is very, very quick. I'd like to have a go and I'd like to challenge Richard Turner, um, who's, who's, who's standing over there in the background. So hopefully he's going to come and um, accept my challenge. Um, so it's going to be the machine tool expert against the work holding expert. Oh, I like that. Now, what is the challenge? It's called the quick change challenge. So what are you ultimately a uh, Heimbach trying to prove here? Yeah, I think it really illustrates the, the speed of the changeover from collet to um, jaw module um, it, it illustrates the speed and the, and the setup time reductions that can be achieved through the product range and why is that important it's extremely important Lindsay because it reduces machine tool downtime um, mm -hmm. so you want to kind of keep that machine tool running and keep them spindles running as all as we always say so be, by reducing your setup time it keeps that spindle turning right on the Heimberg stand what is it that we're going to see because you said the viewers are going to be pleasantly surprised because it's like a way of thinking in this industry and Heimberg are challenging that a little bit with billing. Yeah, I think that, you know, Heimberg is so well renowned with their collet chuck systems for turning applications, but may not necessarily be well known for their milling applications. So I'm going to be talking to Nick Peter about the solutions that they offer for milling and you will be blown away with the solutions that they offer. Right, that show is going to be starting at half past the hour, but first, should we have a little bit of fun? Because I, I tell you, I am not happy. I'm not happy about this, people. I'm not happy because you're beating my times. Like, I was at the top and now I'm not. So, can guys, can you explain to us what's exactly happening here? Right, so we've got the quick change challenge. We're basically going to go from a clamping head to the jaw module and then back to the clamping head. We've got quite a few people that have done it. Lindsay started, I think your time was about 33 seconds to start with. It was, yeah, but now it looks shameful because yeah. look out how, how quick they are. Unfortunately, she was on the leaderboard all day until Gia had a go and he's knocked you off. But I think he's going to have another go shortly. But at the moment, we've got Ed who's at the top with 16.58 seconds, which was incredible, to be honest with you. But what? now I think we're going to have another run through. We're happy to give it a go. Who's going to have a go then? Yeah, You're going to have a go? Pete, Pete Daly. Okay, let's introduce it. Let's uh, find out a little bit more about Pete. Right, Pete, who are you? I'm production engineer at EMS. Right, and what brings you to the show? Obviously, coming to the Heimberg stand and doing the quick change. Looking at channel. tooling in general. Looking at tooling in gen general, right. Do you know what you're about to witness or about to experience? Um, not totally, but I'll go for it. Let's see if he beats my time. Are you ready? Yeah. Good luck, Pete. All good? Yep. And go. Turn it all the way. It's tense. It's looking good. It's looking good. Pete's sweating. Look at it. The, the, the sweat on his head. He's taking it seriously, Lindsay. Very, very serious. That's, that's quick, quick. Well done. Well done. Well done. There's, there's, there's some sweat on your, on your brow. <laughs> that's always there he said well done Pete Good effort, that's Pete. amazing no, no, I'm no. not happy I did 33 and I was really pleased with that oh, you need to have another go later maybe I'll have a let it's a pleasure to meet you thank you for getting involved um, right so it's been a success for you today um, why would you encourage anybody to come and visit the Hein book stand well you can see a huge range of products here we have all of our clamping heads, all of our bushes, our center tech system, which you rarely get to see in person. We have this beautiful demo kit here where you can actually see how quickly you can go from collet to three jaw to collet. It's ridiculous. How long will it take you to change from an actual three jaw chuck to a normal collet chuck? Best part of an hour? 16.58 seconds. That's ridiculous. I think what's really good about that as well is the fact that if you can come to this show and you can make it, it's it's getting your hands on products it's you actually physically experience what you would be experiencing in a machine shop and as much as you know we love uh, we're doing live streams to get that technology out there but it is so important for you to be able to come to a show like this and actually experience what you would be doing in 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 real life oh massively yeah it's been great we've had a lot of customers come over today that they've 
thought about our products or heard about it, but when they've come here and they've saw the different items and how simple and easy it is, in all fairness, Ed, when he came on, he's got a few items, saw the jaw module, and now he's looking at possibly buying. Obviously, he saw another parts, face drivers, magnet module, mandrels even. So it's really good to see that customers seeing a full range of items. What are your thoughts on how busy it is? Because, of course, it's Monday afternoon, so we've had one day here at Mac. How have you found the show? It's been pretty busy. That's been good. <laughs> um, we've had plenty of customers coming across. We've had yourselves come over. It's nice to see a lot of old faces, new faces. And, again, putting faces to names we've spoke to in the last two years, but because we haven't been able to get out, you don't get to see these people. But it has been great to really link up with guys. It's great, isn't it? Right, okay then, Gio, so we're going to be coming back live in just a few moments' time uh, for a bit of a more technical tour on we've got, we've your got a, We've got a products. challenge before that, ooh, Lindsay. Ooh. We've got a challenger. Richard Turner from NCMT is, is, is going to take up a challenge. We've got some rivalry from um, a long time ago. Then. So it's going to be the machine tool expert against the work holding expert. Come on, And then. I'll let you go first and take the honours, Richard. Feel the pressure already. Hang on, let's get the timer ready here. Yeah. Don't get any advantages. Right. This is big, Gio. Yeah, this is big. We'll wait, put wait, a side wait, bet on this, Can we just get some of the banter? Eh? What, what do you think? What, you, what time do you think you're going to... Well, well it's, it was a work holding specialist, you know. He's, he's, he knows that, that, that sort of industry, but I think I might have the edge on him. Because <laughs> it's been a long time since he's been on the tools. Oh, we'll right, see. ready? Right. Do you know what to do? Uh, one, yep. Two, one, go. That's it. Pull it out. He's been practicing. Oh, He's yeah, definitely yeah. been practicing. This isn't fair. You've been practicing at home. <laughs> to the right, back yep. to the left. That's it. That's it. That's it. Pull it back in. Back in. That's it. Yes. Sixteen point six. Whoa! Oh! 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 Goodness oh! gracious! Play. Goodness gracious! How do you feel? Well, I feel like I've set a good benchmark for you there, Gio. You know, work holding specialist. Let's see what you can do. I might let you win this one, Rich. I might. <laughs> let, I might let you. Do you want to take my mic, please? Of course. I think, I think, Rich, you should now uh, talk about and explain exactly what Gio's doing. Just put him off, basically. Go on, then. Yeah, there is good a technique luck. to it. Hold on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do I get the time on? No cheating. Guys, right, are we ready? Great. Two, one, go. Need a taller bench there, I think. To the right, right to the to left. left, go. Back in, he's going fast. Oh, he's got oh, this. He the oh, oh, squeeze it, it unsqueeze it. Oh, the collet's not in. Oh, 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 oh dear, it's all gone wrong. Oh. Oh. Trigger, trigger. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Gentlemen, well done. How do you feel, Gio? Embarrassed. <laughs> well done, mate. Well, well done. done. You put me under pressure there. <laughs> There you go, there you have it. So we'll be back in just a few moments for the live show talking all about Heimberg's technology. We'll see you in just a few minutes' time. Welcome back, everybody, to the MTD CNC Live from Mac 2022. We've had a great day so far, and it is not over yet because we are on the Heimberg stand, and we've got some excitement for you. We're going to take you on a tour um, momentarily of the stand, have a look at some of the products that Heimberg are bringing to market. Now, I've got Nick Peter here. Uh, Nick, four years ago, four years ago we were here. Who would have thought four years on... It was going to be four years on before we'd be doing this again. Yeah, absolutely. And we booked the stand at that particular time and paid for it in full. <laughs> so the question was, do we cancel it? Do we come back again? So we decided to just keep going with it. We didn't know when it was going to come back. And luckily today, here we are. So first day of the show, a week to go. Quite excited. It's really exciting. It's so good to be out and about seeing people, seeing the products and the technology. So, so what's really the ultimate message? Because lots of you are watching. So if you've got any questions, send them in because the team behind all message those and let us know during the stream as well. So we'll get those questions to Nick and his team. Um, main key message that Heimbuck want to achieve from being here at Mac 2022? I think it's really about moving work holding on from the 19th and 20th centuries into the 21st century now and embracing all the technology that engineering generally has to have and manufacturing needs to make things faster, cheaper, smoother, more accurate and work holding has got to play a big part in that. 
which it has up until now, but machine tools are actually becoming faster and hitting things harder, so the tooling's getting better. So the work holding has to hold the part a lot better than it did 40, 50 years ago. So what is it now that you find that you're having to do then from the work holding perspective? Well, we have to be able to change from one part to another part very quickly. We have to do that accurately. We have to hold the part rigidly. It's going to be spinning around at 6,000 RPM at times, and we need to make sure that that part's held. It's not going to come out. It's going to have micron accuracy, and parts are made as quickly and efficiently as possible. And so what challenges do you find that you're coming up against then, um, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis with customers? Any, like, great case studies that you can tell us about uh, as of late? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've supplied nearly all of our quick change work on now to every F1 team. Uh, that's going. Can we just repeat that again? Sorry, what did you just say? I think there's every F1 team now has got our, our work holding, apart from one, I won't mention them. <laughs> <laughs> we will be visiting soon. <laughs> so yeah, it, it all works and if you've got parts to make which are small batches, you need to change over from one part to another part very quickly, the work holding needs to be crisp, sharp and accurate. I mean, that, what an accolade to be able to say. You've also got the Quick Change Challenge on the stand. Yeah. It is Monday. Please come on to the stand, have a go. We've just had a little bit of banter. We're going to have a little bit more banter a little bit later. Um, but it's a really exciting challenge. Now, I'm a little bit upset because I did 33 seconds and I thought that was a good time. We thought it was good, but actually people have halved that now. 16 seconds to change over from a collet to a three-jaw and back to a collet again. You can't do that with normal work holding. It's absolutely just, it, it blows my mind how technical these engineers are as well. Right, okay, I think we're going to head over to Geo because there's three key areas on this stand that we're trying to cover, aren't we, Nick? So we've got milling, which might be of a surprise to you, and then the other two? Uh, we've got the turning and we've also got the quick change system as well. So we've got a small part of our range, to be honest, but we've got to cover all sorts of fields of accuracy and wants, really, within the machine tool uh, industry and the general engineering industry. So we've bought as much as we can, things to sort of interest people, things we can talk about and show them what's around. And we've already had several customers come on who have not seen this before and are quite amazed by the simple fact you can change a collet over in a few seconds. I mean, that is just incredible. I'm going to pass the book over to Gio, who more so is a bit of a work holding specialist. There you go. Thanks, Lindsay. Nick, brilliant to see you back at, at Mac 2022. It's been four years. It's been way too long. It could have been longer, but luckily we're okay. It could have been a lot longer, but luckily yeah, we're all here and uh, the same old faces, a little bit older, a little bit greyer. But, uh, yeah, we're all here. It's good. Nick, it's lovely to see it. I'm looking forward to see how your product portfolio has evolved in them four years. So Nick, if you could come over here, please. Now, you're, you're well renowned for uh, turning uh, products, world, 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 worldwide renowned for the turning products and solutions that you offer, but maybe not so well known for your milling solutions. So I really want to deep dive into the milling solutions that you offer, the applications that they lend themselves to, and why people should come to Mac 2022 to find out more about the milling solutions that are available from Heimbook UK. Yeah, we're not known particularly for our stationary work holding. We should be, to be honest. It's been around for as long almost as the turning side of it. But the same things apply with the milling side. That things have to be quick change, they have to be high accuracy, they have to be rigid. All those things have got to apply the same. What we've found is that a lot of people have got our turning uh, collet system, so we can apply that same collet system, which they've outlaid a lot of money for, to the milling side. So we've got two chucks here, which are stationary chucks. Now, they can actually use the same collets that the turning side uses, so you're not buying a whole new system, you're just buying a simple stationary chuck and moving the system on now from where it was with just the Manot, which is the orange chuck there, we've now moved it on to a carbon fibre chuck, uh, which just really for weight, really, because once you start putting chucks onto tables, weight becomes a bit of a, 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 an issue. So we've got a, a, a steel cast iron now, which is really quite heavy and hefty. The same chuck, the same capacity, same everything. Carbon fibre, you can lift it up with one hand, it's quite easy. So it's, it's, mo it's a little bit more expensive at the moment. We can apply this to rotary turning as well, where spindle speeds and spindle brakes are important, where you're trying to ramp a, speed, a, a spindle up to a certain speed and brake it again. Weight becomes very, very important with moment of inertia. 
So we're going to start on the manual products. We've got other milling solutions to get through too. So, Nick, what kind of applications would you would you use these for? And let's start with three-axis machine tools. Yep. Well, obviously, three-axis, any table you can put that onto. You can put it onto a normal milling machine table, bolt it down onto that. It can go onto a, um, a rotary table of any description. It can be, it be used on a test bed. It's a chuck that can be bolted down onto a test bed for testing machines or just, just trial parts and things like that. They're quite cheap to buy. So once you've got the system with the collets, you add on one of these and you can put it onto a, a table or a test table or anything you want, really. Would it just be for round parts? No, I mean square parts, whatever the collet system itself um, lends itself to any particular profile. We've done tri-lobe brake parts, we've done star shapes, all sorts of different shapes and sizes. We actually stock squares, hexagons and size like that, but really whatever profile you want can be wire cut or milled into those collets. What's the repeatability and clamping force like on these manual systems? The clamping system, on, uh, the, the clamping force on these is very high, the same as all our collet systems. They've got to hold parts rigidly while you use the full speeds and feeds of the machine tool. It's no good having work holding that can only use half of the speed or half of the feed and you have to throttle everything back. You've got to do it at full, full pelt. Still talking about free axis machine tools here, Nick. How far could the part be sticking out? Um, you know, and, and how hard could you be hitting that part with that inertia that you would apply yeah. it, it really just depends on the size uh, of the part I mean obviously if you've got a small part sticking out it's likely to deflect when you hit it with a machine tool it won't move out the chuck but it's then down to the tool in the machining of the part if you've got a bar that's 65 mil diameter you could have it up here somewhere as long as it's held a little way into the into the collet and hit it quite hard because the bar itself's not going to deflect and what's the minimum depth oh, uh, of clamping um, that, that, you, that you could put the component in? But again, depending on the part, G, but sort of discs and things like that can be held on three or four mil uh, right at the top there because these collets do not deform at the back and spit parts out. So you can put it against an end stop inside and just clamp on a very short disc space. Well, that is very impressive. Now, I want to move on to an application that is, is perfect for this, in my opinion, fifth axis machine tools yeah. let's talk our audience through how you would prep a rectangular or prismatic part um, to, to be utilized with a, a manic uh, collet chuck on a fifth axis machine yep i mean we can clamp anything the fifth axis just gives you the ability further ability to move it into a different position really but it gives you the ability to get around the part a lot more uh, and with these chucks now i mean they're a lot smaller than a normal three jaw chuck would be where you're getting into jaws and things like that so it's actually very similar to the sort of vices that you can see now where you've got a lot more clearance to get around them and nick you know if say for example you turned a boss on a on a prismatic part yep. and you were to put that boss and bury that boss into the collet yep. but you you were to have the boss still being protruding the actual face of the collet chuck could you actually start hitting the sixth side of, uh, of that component if that makes sense yeah you could do i mean it's all it's all down to the part itself and how you how you want to orientate it or load it but actually we have got people that have actually machined in the other side of this so you put in a bar into the chuck here onto a stanchion and actually pushing it through and machining two sides of this at the same time so you put it onto an angle plate basically with that chuck up on its side and pushing the part through, clamping it and machining the profile on both ends. So effectively Nick, you could be turning on a boss or circular interpolating a boss onto a billet and using that as a, as, as just a holding piece really, excess material. Yeah absolutely, you can use it as an excess or you can machine something in uh, which is finished and just clamp it on a smooth, a smooth collet and machine further up the, uh, the bar if you wanted to or, or whatever shape you've got. Nick, brilliant. So again, the, the, the horizontal machines would be exactly the same. Yeah. No, Nick, we've got these products here still that we've got to get through uh, quickly. Um, we've got a zero point system here. Yeah. Now, I, I'm pretty certain that a lot of people wouldn't know you for your zero point system. Yeah. Could you tell our audience about this system and, and how it works, please, Nick? Well, we now use uh, our Centrex system on all of our quick change devices. It's a system that we've developed, and literally, this is the Centrex. Uh, positioning system which is a two-part system a bush uh, and a male part that goes in and we use this for positioning plates uh, down where you'd normally use a dowel and a hole to get those that positioning right that dowel and that hole have got to be really really tight and then you've got to get the plate absolutely square on it with this position this system literally it goes inside the plate can be thrown off from the other side of the machine and it literally will actually position the plate within three 
microns completely. This works literally with a system of rubber around here with ball bearings embedded in it and they fit into the taper there and they only position perfectly when you put a little bit of pressure on so we can guarantee that that actually positions anything within three microns. I mean that, that repeatability is, is absolutely amazing. Now automation springs into mind when we're looking at a system like this. Yeah. Obviously you can quite easily automate the, the turning solutions and the collet truck solutions that you offer but how would you automate some of the milling solutions that you offer also Nick? Yeah I mean again it comes back to this Centrex system. This just positions the plates or whatever work holding, fixturing, whatever you've got. This just positions it in the right right place. You've then got to have something which is going to squeeze the part together. So that could be literally uh, a key with a turn which will actually squeeze them together. It could be hydraulics, it could be a hydraulic piston that squeezes them together. So another system which is really simple to automate really makes this system very, very easy to use. We've got to go to, to Colin shortly to, to talk about the turning solutions, but can you quickly just tell me about the final final product that's on the milling, milling section, please? Yeah, these are very small little hydrop chucks, uh, and these are self-contained uh, stationary chucks that fit together um, with these pipes here. Actually, you can gang them up onto plates. They're very small, and they go up to 32 mil uh, capacity. Um, we can put tandem cylinders on them which make them very very powerful and all you need to do is connect them into onto a plate and connect them into the the plate itself put an airline in it can be completely self-contained with check lines things like that and you've got a, a gang up of different multiple parts so again perfect for automation absolutely yeah absolutely Nick, thanks for the deep dive into the milling products that you offer please come and visit the Heim book stand to find out more about some of these milling solutions that Iron Book UK can offer but now Colin's going to be talking to Dave Noakes about the turning solutions that everyone knows Iron Book for. Thanks Nick. Thanks very much. Geo that is fantastic explaining all about the milling side of things. I'm joined by I think you'd be described as a legend in engineering is that right Dave? No it's not at all but thanks for the compliment. And while we've been listening to Geo I've been sort of working on this, the quick change challenge, and this showcases exactly what you do on the turning side of things, and I think if our cameraman get it, someone snuck up the leaderboard. They have, and it looks like his name's Colin, and he's got a 15.59, which we never thought was achievable. Well, we didn't, you didn't think 16.58 was achievable? No, we didn't, actually, and uh, this chap, Colin, he's, he's, n he's nabbed it at the moment. Yeah, and you know how I did it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, I had the pen. But this is a great way of showcasing yes. exactly what you guys do. So, in a nutshell, Talk me through it. Well, this is a great place to start because we've got our span top, mini, topless chuck here. And all the adaption units we've got are here before us. So we've got the mandrel adaption here. Now the mandrels go from 8 to 200 mil internal clamping. You've got a mag chuck here, magnetic chuck. Can I just go back to the, the mandrel side Sorry. of things? Yep. The so, what's, what range? So that's eight to, two, eight, to eight to 200 mil as a standard. We can go bigger as a special, but that's internal clamping. And this will be quick change into this system. Indeed. How long will it take me to change? Well, to change over into that, you're looking at, well, as simple as putting it in there, three cappers in there, and you're off. Rhetorical that quick. Rhetorical question actually, because I did the whole lot in 15.59 seconds. You did indeed, but of course it's all zero point. So you know we're looking at a sort of repeatability on these within 10 to 15 microns. Okay, and there's less in some cases. There's four key words that are come, going to come out from this presentation. That's repeatability. Yep. Accuracy. Yep. Quick change. Yep. And rigidity. Rigidity. Okay. Absolutely. So one concern engineers might have is if I'm changing all that because you've got mandrel here magnetic plate here yes and a face driver there and a drill module here am i if i'm changing these all around yes it's great it's fantastic it's, am i going to compromise rigidity with speed not at all because you know these these are made to integrate within the chuck it you know that's how they were designed in the first place they're not things that someone's come up with and thought oh that's that looks a good idea it was all designed in conjunction with the chuck to work seamlessly with it okay. so mandrel here what up, this is the magnetic plate. Magnetic chuck, yeah. This is for difficult, difficult to hold parts, really. You know, these sort of weird shapes and whatnot, and you can get them on there quite easily. Yeah. It's, that, it's that simple? Yes, yeah. And then over here, three-jaw chuck. Three-jaw chuck. This is a very popular unit that we sell. This is called the dual module. Comes in two sizes, 145 mil and a 215. This is a 145. And this is, in fact, the one we're doing the quick change challenge on. 
how quick you can go from a collet chuck to a three jaw chuck. And as we can see here, 16 seconds, 16, 17 seconds. Uh, you missed out 15.59, well, yeah, I'd like to add. Yeah. You know, and that's how quick you can change over. Okay, so a, a normal engineer, a normal system, how long would it take? I mean, I know it's going to be application specific ballpark. Machine. I mean, you know, for somebody like me, I'd take my time and whatnot. Yeah, you're looking at a minute. But if you don't have this system, though? Oh, if you don't, if you're changing from a, from a college chuck to a three jaw chuck, couple of hours, couple of three hours, a couple of hours down to and one, it, two minutes. And it depends how, the, how big the three jaw chuck is, because we all know they're heavy, difficult to crane in and crane out, so yes. Now, next thing then, face driver. What sort of applications are you going to use for that? Well, face driver really is for, for long, cumbersome parts, something like crankshafts, that kind of thing. You can pull that in front of the college chuck, you've got a centre the other end, and that will drive the part. Okay. What I think we should do now, that's a great sort of showcase of what you do with the with the quick change system. We're going to have to barge these guys as it's a live show. We're going to have to barge these guys, I think. Can we use the words barge? Yeah, you can. Yeah, barge go on out of the way. Get out of the way. And if we come around behind here, please, Dave. If you want to come around this side, please. Yeah. We've been practicing this for weeks and he still gets it wrong. That's the well, joy of a live show. Still don't know me right from my left. What have I got here? Well, this really is our bread and butter. This is a selection of our collet chucks here, going from a 26 mil chuck up to a 100. And this is, this is bread and butter for us. You know, you've got a mixture of pullback chuck. Well, they're all pullback, in fact. We've got a dead length over there. But these are generally pullback chucks. So you've got 26, 52, 65 mil, and 100 mil chuck. Okay, do they go bigger? They do. We go up to 120 and above for certain specials. Okay. Now, the eagle eyes amongst you would have seen round. Yep. Hexagon, what's the yeah. difference? Well, obviously the shape's different, but why the difference? Well, the hexagon is our top plus system. And the beauty of the top plus system is it's totally sealed because it's on flat surfaces. You get better rotational clamping force. So how much more force would you get? Well, Heimbert reckon around about 25% more wow, sorry. rotational clamping force, yeah. Okay. Now you say no ingress, so great for your... So are you grinding applications? Perfect for grinding. And this is where we, we've sold quite a number of these chucks into grinding applications because you don't get all that ingress going into the back of the chuck. Okay. Now, another thing I'm thinking then is this is quite small. So in terms of the, um, the speed and uh, inertia of it, it's, it's going to get up to speed quickly come to, and slow down a lot quicker so more efficient. Well, the thing is people f familiar with our product, we used to do a full body chuck. Now, this was... It's not been superseded, you still buy the full body chuck, but we now, 90% of the chucks we sell now are the mini chucks. And the beauty of them was twofold, really. You, you got a 30% reduction at the front end, so that gives you less inertia on startup speed, and also it gives you better access with the tooling to the center line of the part. Right, so not only saving um, it costs in terms of running the machines, actually being able to get to those more access, complex parts. Access. Well, the thing is, you know, machine tools are becoming more complex, multi-turreted, multi-spindle multi type machines. Just gives you better access. And what sort of machines are these going on if people don't know this system? Well, generally CNC, CNC lays. They can be single spindle, twin spindle, single turret, twin turret, three turrets on a lot of machines. But you, you fixed, essentially you fixed head lays. Yes. Now, you said this is your bread and butter side of things. Let's move back over to here. This isn't your bread and butter side of things. This is more, I mean, an example, high-end automotive. This Talk is, me through this. This is, this is really the ultimate where you can go. Because we've talked about the, adop the adaptions. Now, you know, you have to remember that the, the, the clue to these is in the word adaptions. They are adaptions to a collet chuck. These aren't adaptions. This is our Centratex S system, which is, you know, this is a game changer, really, because what you actually do is you rely on this is your common inter machine interface. So that is fixed onto the machine, and you've got a bayonet coupling here. Now, in terms of the, these three units, you can go from a collet chuck, three-jaw chuck, to a mandrel. Now, you imagine changing those as individual units on a machine. You're looking three, four hours. We're talking less than four minutes to change over to each single device on here. But these, these are big units as such. How are you going to change them? Well, generally, these, these are changed with what's our, called our Montec system, which is a crane system. I think we've got a shot of that just yeah, up if our cameraman can get that up just up here. So that's your Montec system, that's correct? Yeah. And the thing is with these, Colin, they're quite heavy. They're not like the jaw.